Hey guys, Cal from Lighting Doctor here. Thanks for checking in today. I am going to talk to you guys about wire connectors, uh, which ones to use for low voltage landscape lighting, where to use them, and what common mistakes to avoid. So be sure to like and subscribe to this video and go check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca for all kinds of other free resources. So let's get into it. Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about a bunch of different wire connectors. I'm not going to do a bunch of connecting here. There's all kinds of videos on how to wire landscape lighting. You can go check out our YouTube channel. Uh, just search Lighting Doctor, how to wire low voltage landscape lighting, or go to our website. We have a how-to page that covers all those questions. So I'm not going to get into that. I just want to talk about all the different kinds of waterproof, low voltage uh, landscape lighting connectors, where you would want to use them, what to avoid. So. You know, the, the first thing I'm going to uh, start with is what to avoid. A lot of times you will go to the home improvement stores, and I don't even have a good example of one to show you because we just don't use them. But um, basically what it is is you see those ones, they're almost like a little puck that have a couple prongs inside of them that poke into the landscape lighting wire. Well, two things. One, if they're built onto the light already um, and you still want that light, cut them off, get some proper waterproof ones. Two, uh, what happens is anything that is going to pierce into the wire, especially if it doesn't have any gel or silicone in it, anytime you're doing low voltage lighting, if you don't have some kind of waterproofing, some kind of silicone, throw those out, stay away from it. But even those piercing ones that come with silicone inside the pucks, when you clamp down on the wire, it doesn't always make a good uh, clean connection. And a lot of times, those fail and I'll tell you the biggest problem with that is when people are using those they're super easy but what happens is you you get this this wire but because it just clamps onto it most people don't give any slack so that's fine it's easy to use but then what happens if you ever have an issue and need to go replace that connection there well there's no room for you to wiggle with and you've got holes in your wire so what you have to do is now you have to cut the wire back cut the wire back and then you have to add an extra piece and now you're adding two connectors on each side. So all of a sudden you've just doubled uh, the amount of connections where less connections is always more. So stay away from anything that doesn't have some kind of waterproof and silicone and stay away from anything that actually pierces into the wire. That's the number one thing. Yes, they can be cheaper. Yes, they can be quicker. Yes, they can be easier. But uh, I would just highly, highly recommend staying away from that. So. Um, next connector, a really basic one, really standard one, is sometimes you just get these um, these morettes that are gel filled. Uh, they come in basically three different sizes. If you've ever done irrigation and stuff, um, you've seen these. This is like the smallest one. It's basically just a standard morette, but it's filled with uh, gel and silicone. So these are okay. Um, you know, I don't love them for long, long lasting connections because sometimes we see the the gel inside kind of dries off and the connection's not as smooth anymore. Um, these small ones you probably don't want to use for low voltage wire uh, for landscape lighting because typically you're running a main line and that main line is going to be at least 12 gauge wire. They're just a little small for that. So that's the small size. Uh, for landscape lighting, I would probably avoid the small ones. Next you move up into, uh, so that was kind of like a white base one. Then you'll find these, they kind of have a gray base. They're a little bit longer. These ones are okay to use for, for tining your fixtures um, because uh, what happens when you're tining your fixtures, you basically are gonna have two 12-2 uh, wires going each one of these. And then you're gonna have your wire from your fixture, which is always like 18 gauge or 16 gauge. This has no problem handling those. Basically all you do is strip the wires, wire them in there, uh, and then they're waterproof. The only problem with these, and the one thing I will say you need to do if you're gonna use these, is you have gotta go and get something like some zip ties or something like that so that after you make the connection, you can kinda loop up the wire a little bit and zip tie it together so that if you ever have any tension, it's not gonna pull out of that connection because that's what happens a lot of times with these. The, um, the little copper part that's in there that twists the wires together, it's not really designed to hold the wires together. The gel will do an okay of waterproof in them, uh, but it's not gonna really keep them from pulling apart. So this is probably your cheapest option and a lot of people will go with this. Uh, I'm okay with that. I've seen them fail from time to time over the years as the silicone inside kind of dries off because it is exposed. Uh, but if you're gonna do that, you've gotta use some kind of 
zip tie or something to hold that wire from uh, pulling apart. There is one more version. I don't even have it because we don't use it a lot of times. Um, but if you ever need to like tee into a line and you're going to use these, they make one more version. It's a blue version. It's about double the size. It can handle up to three, sometimes four 12-2 wires in it. So if you need to tee something, that's okay. Um, you can use those. Again, it's not the most waterproof, but it is a good option. But double the amount of zip ties you're using if you're making those big, big connections because you don't want that wire pulling apart. So there's basically three sizes of these. This is your cheapest option. Um, and it works, but I think there's better options, which I'll show you guys. Um, and these are all do-it-yourself type ones I'm talking about. There's all kinds of different wire connectors. A lot of protect professionals will use uh, ones with uh, copper crimping parts that go into this big gel-filled thing. And, and they're all great. They're just they're more time-consuming. They're all good. The two things you want to always look for, and that's what I'll, I'll kind of talk about with these next uh, couple is some kind of waterproofing in silicone and some kind of um, mechanical uh, mechanical way to hold the wire so it doesn't pull apart. That's why these are not always my favorite because you got to use zip ties uh, just for some extra strength. I always recommend zip tying the wire anyway just for that added uh, protection, but you don't need to as much with these other ones I'm going to talk about. So um, the next option I'm going to talk about, you guys have seen lots of videos with these. Um, it's these BVS2 connectors. Uh, basically what it is, it's this little kind of clip that opens up. Um, you got to make sure it's open like this to get the wires in. And then uh, you just strip the ends, you push them in. This is all gel filled so it waterproofs them. And then it snaps tight down on the wire to help keep it from pulling apart. I always try and put a little extra zip ties around it just to help. Because they're not bulletproof. I mean, if it gets caught up and you give it a good tug, it can still come undone. So that zip tie is just a little bit extra proof. Um, these are great. The only, uh, I guess I would say, downside with these is that um, they have three ports in the bottom, and you can't probably can't see it here. Uh, hopefully in this close-up picture you can see it. Um, but two of them are for the 12-2 wire, up to 12-2. You can't use these for anything bigger than 12-2 wire. That's uh, one of the drawbacks, but usually not a problem because if you're using an LED system, there's almost zero reason that you need to go bigger than 12-2 wire. I would also say... It doesn't save you a whole lot to go smaller, and this is going to avoid you a lot less voltage drop. But you can only fit two of those wires in, and then it has a smaller port for the wire on the fixture, which is always tends to be a little bit smaller. So these are great when you're making connections at each fixture. They're super quick, uh, super waterproof. That's why I like these. That's why we use them a lot, because you can just go bang, bang, and, and bust it out, no problem, for all your connections at your fixtures. If you need to tee into a line anywhere, uh, again, we've got lots of videos about that. Uh, this you're not going to be able to use because you can't fit that extra T or that extra 12 gauge wire in this. So this is only to be used at every fixture. And uh, just like all these connections I talked about, you still need two of the connectors at every single fixture. Again, just go search Lighting Doctor, how to wire low voltage lighting, all kinds of videos with diagrams and that that'll kind of walk you through how to do that. So. BVS2, uh, very popular, very quick, very waterproof, uh, really good connector. Next, uh, a similar a similar type connector, same kind of idea. It's kind of these, it's these uh, nano junction boxes. Basically, it's it's essentially the same thing. It's just a slightly different style. So it's got this, uh, it's got the three ports here and it's got these little orange tabs that you just, you pull up. Um, this can handle up to three 12-2 wires so you can fit um, you can do tees and stuff with this. I, I don't love it for that because it gets a little bit tight in there. Uh, but for wiring your fixtures, this is great. You lift up these tabs, you put your wires in, you snap down these orange ones, and then this little part here is filled with gel and it just snaps down on top of here. And then everything's good. It's, it's pull part resistant and it's got the waterproofing. Uh, that's what we need. And one thing I will mention, um, you know, it's always good to have a couple extras on hand because if you make a mistake, you don't always want to open these up. It's better sometimes just to cut the wire. Even though they're not cheap, um, they are messy. And that's not just these, that's any good waterproof connector is going to be messy. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. You want it to be messy. You want to have a lot of gel all over your hands, which I guarantee you, you're going to. Uh, it's hard to wash off. You can use gloves, but it's tough to kind of play with the wire sometimes. So it is what it is, but messy in this case is better. Um, these are, again, really good, especially for tying in the fixtures and stuff. Wires go in the bottom. These orange 
uh, little pieces clamp down. This whole thing closes tight, snaps, and it's completely waterproof. So really good uh, nano junction option as well. Then probably my favorite and probably the most sailproof, uh, sorry, um, foolproof uh, is the DBRY connector. But before I do that, I will talk about one other connector that we do use sometimes. It is basically a shrink wrap connector. Um, all it is is a little black tube that is that does have gel in it and what this is good for is anytime you have an area where you kind of need to make a small inconspicuous connection to extend the wire um, or it's got to be you know in an area where you just you don't want a big like for tree lighting for example if you're having a down light you run out of wire you need to extend it this is good because what this does is you basically just tie the wires uh, together inside of there and then with just a torch um, you melt this over top and it basically it just molds onto the wire the gel oozes it seals that it's not going to come apart this is just a good kind of specialty option if you need to extend a wire need a really inconspicuous connection um, so shrink wrap connectors are a good option i love them we do use them sometimes but but only when needed because they are a lot more time consuming you need a little blowtorch um, and it's just it's just a little bit more work if you don't actually need um, that inconspicuous connection. The last one is our DBR, DBRY connectors. Basically all it is is a standard morette that fits into a big gel tube. So it, so it looks like this. It can be different colors. It doesn't matter. They're going underground. Um, but basically what it is, if you've ever wired any lights together, it's just a standard morette. Um, you can hold up to three 12-2 wires in one of these, no problem. So they're great for making tees. We use these all the time for making tees because I know that I can make a tee in this, no problem. All the wires will fit. Um, with these tubes, it's completely filled with gel. Uh, so what you do is you wire them together and then you push the wires into this gel filled tube as far up as you can. And then this little bottom piece snaps down on the wires so it won't come apart. So it's a really, really good option. If you have trouble with any other wire connectors, I would strongly uh, encourage you to go with this. These are uh, used actually a lot of times in uh, line voltage, uh, 120 volt. Uh, they're good for up to 600 volts. So I see a lot of electricians use these in, um, in outdoor uh, line voltage lighting because they're rated for that. So they're super, super durable. Um, the only reason sometimes we don't use these for every connection is they just, they're a little bit more time consuming than say like the BVS2 connectors where you can just push the wires in, snap it and go. Um, not that these take a whole lot more time, but sometimes just getting this closed on the wires can be a little bit trickier. So, uh, it just kind of depends on time, but if you're ever stuck, you can usually find, you know, a couple of these in the electrical aisle, uh, just like any of the good waterproof ones. I'll, I'll be honest guys, they're, they're not cheap, but there's a reason because you're not going to have to do them probably ever again. So, I mean, you might pay anywhere from two to $5 for one single connection, but that's because they're designed to live underground. Uh, when we do gutter mounted lights and we have to actually have lights sit in the gutter, I know that I can use these waterproof ones. I don't have to worry about it creating any shorts or anything like that. So that's what you want to make sure. You want to make sure you've got that gel, you've got some kind of uh, pull tight resistance that's going to keep those wires from coming apart. Um, other than that, that's that's kind of the main ones. Uh, the two that you, or the three that you'll find us talk about the most are these guys because I can use them in fixtures, I can use them at tees. You'll see us talk a ton about the BVS2 connectors because again, they're waterproof, super quick. You can just fly through for all your fixture lights. And also you'll see us talk about the uh, nano junction ones. Again, super waterproof, nice and easy, pull, uh, pull part resistance. So it's got all those features, guys. Uh, again, be sure to like and subscribe to this video. Uh, if you found it helpful, go check out lightingdoctor.ca. We have a whole how-to page that has most of the questions that you guys have about landscape lighting answered in a video format. So you guys can go there, uh, lightingdoctor.ca how-to page. Uh, check out our channel too. There's also over 500 different videos, um, you know, showing you everything you need to about landscape lighting. And I know a lot of you guys still don't know, but we offer our free consultation service where you know, doing this stuff, this is the easy part, to be honest, when it comes to landscape lighting. The toughest part is figuring out what lights to use and where to use them. And that's why we allow people to take advantage of a consultation service where you can email me directly pictures of your property. I'm going to walk through it. I'm going to show you what lights to use, where, 
We can even help you put together a custom kit. We can do all kinds of things like that. So take advantage of our free consultation service, guys. We do um, thousands of those a year, so don't feel like you're bugging us. Uh, that's what we do. And another really good tool that you should go and take advantage of is our Try It Before You Buy It lights. Basically, what you can do is you can actually go test out some of these premium fixtures with a battery pack that lights them up. You go walk around your property, check them in different spots uh, so that you can get the right effect that you want. I still do that to this day. Uh, when I start a new property, I know where a lot of the lights are going to go, but there's some areas I'm not sure. I want to go test it out. I want to see how it's going to look so that we can go and pick the appropriate lights. And you guys should too, especially if you don't have the experience yet. You're not going to find a better tool than this. You don't have to pre-wire anything if you're a landscape contractor and you want to get into lighting. You don't have to run wires above ground to do demos and stuff. You get a half dozen of these with some battery packs. You can go and, and show your customers, show your clients what it's going to look like. Landscape lighting is one of those things. And once you see it, uh, it's tough to take it away. Uh, so battery pack is a great way to go and, and find the right solution for you guys. So again, thanks for watching. I uh, love your comments. Be sure to reach out and we'll see you in the next video.